murdered and assassinated in cold blood. But this was revealed then later, and this you, came you, you were later. shocked uh, and to it hear shocked that. shocked all of us who uh, were involved. Uh, how, what, what would you call these groups of security forces? Some called them death squads. Was, was, is that a correct term? I, I think, yes, there were such death squads which were organized. And I don't know whether individual ministers or my predecessor to what extent uh, some people were aware of this. Some of these people claim that they be really believed they had authorization from the top. But what I, what I can say is that, uh, that it was never policy to have death squads. And we were all shocked when we heard about this. But in hindsight, um, do you really believe that no member of the apartheid system leadership were aware of these death squads? I think here and there, on specific incidents, people were aware. And therefore, for instance, a former minister of police did, for two or three things, apply for amnesty. But he didn't apply for amnesty of the things he didn't know about. So, unless... My former colleagues are lying to me, none of them, ex with a few exceptions, with regard to a few incidents, have applied for amnesty. Mr. de Klerk was head of a, a government that engaged in criminal activity, yeah. according to the final report from, from your commission. He has never asked for amnesty, and he has never accepted responsibility for the crimes of the system. Would you like to see him tried in a courtroom <laughs> today? No, I don't. I mean, I'm, I don't think. I mean, that uh, well, there's much that you are going likely to gain. Uh, and I have to say to you, you know, that I am not too concerned about people who may give the system a slip, because this is a moral universe. Every single person has to live with themselves. And brother, I tell you, that can be pretty tough. I dag kan ingen i Sydafrika sige, at de ikke ved, hvad der foregik under apartheid. Alle kender til torturen, til drabene, takket være Sandheds- og Forsoningskommissionen. Sydafrika er blevet et velfungerende demokrati, men det betyder ikke, at alle er lige. Der er sorte millionærer nu, der er en sort politisk elite med magt og indflydelse, men langt de fleste sorte lever stadig, som de hele tiden har gjort, i fattige townships. The peaceful transition of power in South Africa is often referred to as a miracle. Yeah. But when you look at South Africa today, with rampant violent, violence and widespread poverty, and economical segregation that runs along the same lines as mm. the racial segregation did during the, the time of apartheid, do you see true reconciliation? You know, I usually say to people, have you ever been to Germany? Now, Germany was split into two for, what, about 50 years? And it was Germans on this side and Germans on the other side. You go to Germany today, the wall has gone down, eh? and they have been following vigorously a policy of reunification, uh, and it is people who look alike, who speak the same language, go and ask, Are they reconciled? No, they aren't. I mean, they still disc look at each other really as aliens. We, did you know, we have 11 official languages. We suffered under vicious injustice, not for 50 years, 300 years. 
Don't you think that we have actually achieved something? Who in their right mind could ever imagine that 300 years of injustice would be transformed, changed in 10 years? If I were to draw a balance sheet on South Africa, the positive by far outweighs the negative. In the economic sphere, I'm very satisfied with the policies. We're achieving economic growth. We need to increase that economic growth. On the issue of race relations and relations between the different language groups, we have 11 official languages. Things are progressing well, there is, a, there is a joint commitment to do nation building in South Africa. South Africa has come a long way in terms of democracy, but not in terms of equality. Are you disappointed in the new black elite that has taken the place of the uh, apartheid government? Uh, I wish that it was different, but they, it, it, it just shows that uh, Original sin knows no skin color. <laughs> that uh, people, people are people, and people there are people who are going to <clears throat> succumb to temptations. Uh, other people will not. And and whilst I wish that the altruism, uh, the idealism, that. Uh, characterized our struggle could have carried over. It just shows actually that I'm being naive and the reality is that uh, human beings are human beings because they are human beings. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Præsten Desmond Tutu og præsidenten Wilhelm Frederik de Klerk har skrevet sig ind på hver sin side i historien om det nye Sydafrika. Tutu modtog Nobels fredspris for sit arbejde og virker stadig i sin kirke i dag. De Klerk modtog også fredsprisen sammen med Nelson Mandela, og han leder nu en velgørende fond. When the history books are being written, how would you like to be remembered? I hope that it will say about my role that I made a difference. That I helped to prevent the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and that when called upon, I accepted the challenge to help to make my country a better place for all its people. How would you like to be remembered? I hope they will say, oh, he loved, <laughs> he loved, he loved, and he cried. Næste uge er vi i Washington. Her besøger vi USA's tidligere udenrigsminister, Madeleine Albright, og det første spørgsmål til hende kommer fra Desmond Tutu. Dear Madeleine Albright, as a human rights activist, what do you think should really happen in the Holy Land? between Israel and the Palestinians. Dear Archbishop Tutu, uh, I am honored that you would ask me a question, and you have asked a very difficult one. But when we were in office, President Clinton and I worked very hard uh, on the issue, and I believe that the only solution is that there be an independent Palestinian state that lives peacefully side by side with an Israel uh, that has a sense of security. <laughs> 